Connecting your electrical panel like this, it's definitely scary. Especially if you're like me and you've never done this before. Uh, you probably wonder what kind of breaker you should even use. I mean, there is arc fault protection, ground fault protection, single pole, double pole breakers. So don't you worry. I'm not an expert, but today I will try and cover all the basics of what it took for me to put this together. All right, let's do this. This is a 100 amp electrical panel. This could be used as a main panel for a house, but I'm going to be using it as a sub panel. So because it is, a, it is originally intended to be a main panel, you can see that. So those bars here are called the neutral bar. In a main panel, both the neutral wires and the ground wire all get connected to the neutral bar. And then they usually have a ground screw, like a little green screw. What that screw will do is that it will pretty much bound your neutral bus bar to the actual back of your electrical panel and making the ground and the, the neutral the same thing. When you're doing a sub panel, you absolutely do not want to have the neutral and the ground together. So for that reason, you actually have to buy a separate ground bar, which is gonna get installed either side. And so then when we put all the wires, we will put the ground and the neutral separately. All right, one of the things that maybe took me the, the longest to figure out is, you know, what kind of breaker to use, and that is pretty much defined by code requirement and what you're gonna put, you know, on your circuit. So here is a summary of the nine circuit in this cabin everything that I'm about to put in this electrical panel. Let's quickly go over the different type of breaker that exists. My first circuit is all the living room lights. Uh, again, per code, you need arc fault ground protection. So, but you don't need ground fault because there won't be any water next to those, you know, outlets. So for that case, you will need uh, an arc fault breaker like this one with the white knob. The circuit number two is the outdoor receptacle and some other outdoor stuff. Uh, this needs to be ground fault protected. But so that's when you have to really think twice because you could put everything on one of these and be having, you know, and have like a ground fault protection directly from the breaker. But those are very expensive. They're like 60 or $70 a piece. So sometimes if you're only gonna have a few outlets, you're better off using a normal breaker and then putting ground fault protected outlet directly in your, you know, wherever your receptacle is gonna be. Circuit three and four are gonna be the kitchen. Uh, those ones need to be both arc fault and ground fault. So for that reason, I will be using those guys. Um, they're expensive, but it's just the easiest way to deal with those. Circuit five is the bathroom. So interestingly enough, a bathroom does not need to be arc fault protected per code. Uh, again, the outlet will need to be ground fault protected because it is in a moisture and water environment. But again, because I'm cheap and because I only have one outlet, I'm just gonna use a normal breaker and I will just use a ground fault protected, uh, you know, outlets where, you know, in the bathroom. Circuit six is the attic. There is no requirement whatsoever. I'm just gonna use a simple 20 amp. And then circuit seven, eight, and nine are all 240 volts. So they will all require double pole breaker and the amperage will depend on what you're hooking up to it. So for example, my water eater, um, I kind of know what I'm gonna buy. It's gonna be a 25 amp breaker that's required. And for the mini split and the electric cooktop, I can get away with only a 20 amp double pole breaker like this one. So before we jump into all this wiring, let me start by saying that I'm obviously not a licensed electrician and that I'm allowed to do this because uh, I'm building this cabin on my own land. So in my county, I'm allowed to do all the electrical and the plumbing. Obviously, it's gonna need to be inspected by a county inspector. So they will check that <laughs> I didn't mess things up. But that's what you have to keep in mind is that if they come and they see that you don't really know what you've, you've done, they can force you to hire a licensed electrician to fix all your mistakes. All right, let's do this. So let's take a minute now to talk about today's sponsor, Discount Lots. If you have been enjoying my content, you're probably looking at building a cabin either for your personal use or maybe just like me as a rental property. And well, to build a cabin, you're gonna need a piece of land to build it on. Discount Lots offer a simple process to acquire land. They have an easy to use website that lets you search plots of land based on your criteria. You do not need a real estate agent to make a purchase, which removes any commission or extra fees. The land plots can be purchased cash, or they also provide some financing options for you. They provide you with a lot of valuable information concerning the plot, but you probably will still need to do a little bit of research concerning zoning, especially if you're planning on building. All you would have to do would be to research the zoning for the specific county the land is located in and find out what can be done with that land, especially if you want to do a short-term rental of building a tiny house, for example. Keep in mind that different counties have different rules. Discount Lots provided me with a link to share with you guys to get 10% off your next land purchase using the coupon code DL for Discount Lot Cabin Guy 
10. The link can be found in the description below. Thank you again Discount Alert for sponsoring my content and let's get back to the electrical panel installation. So I have all that stuff it needs to go in there. Uh, let's so you're definitely gonna want some safety glasses because I really don't want to get my eyes poked by some of this wire. All right, so how do you do this? So I think the first step, so let's put that ground valve somewhere. All right, there's still a good start. So now is when I could easily start losing track. So apparently, I mean, I can just use a little piece of the sleeve as a way to like mark it up. Yeah, there we go. Secret number one is this bad boy. How do you even put this on? This doesn't want to go in, so I want to break this uh, fine $70 piece of plastic and metal. Oh, I got it in. So obviously you're going to need the black. Uh, probably, you know, you remove maybe like a quarter of an inch, something like that. And then obviously at the back, so you have the brass up here, which is going to be all black. And then the silver is going to be a white. So black brass at the top. And just tie it up. And then the white. So you have to wiggle it so that it fits on the neutral bow. And then you align it here with this and you kind of firmly press down. And that is it. This is good. And so you see, like, I also left this with the number one, which is my first circuit. So whatever, I think that's good. So those shorter ones, you have to hook it up to like the, the plastic bar here. And then same, you kind of like, whoops. Uh, let's speak too soon. Boom. And you snap it in, but you can see the difference between the uh, Arcful Protected and just the normal one. So then this time, this time the white is going to go to the neutral bar, which is back here. And then only the black will be connected to my uh, breaker. I mean, once you understood that, it's pretty straightforward, I would say. I don't know why this is not brass, because, you know, your black's going to go on it. But I mean, you can't go wrong because that's the only one you can really put in there. So don't think you can really make a mistake. Here's the second one. All right, so, oh no, I messed it up. You see this? I just cut this. I cut it too short. It's too short now. <sighs> yep. So it's not all lost. What I can do is, and what I might do is, I can buy another ground bar and I'll put it here on the side. And then I can hook up my my ground to it. It will make it a little cleaner anyway, because then I won't have to like go all the way to the side. I'm just trying to find an excuse, you know, after I just mess up miserably, but. Uh. Circuit number three is kitchen. It's both arc fault and ground fault protected. So it's this guy. All right, that's good. It's not bad at all. After that, it was a fairly repetitive process. I actually quite enjoyed it, you know, installing one breaker after the other one. I would say that the only thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to keep everything balanced, meaning that you want to put breaker on both sides and not just put everything on the same one side, obviously. So I'm making some good progress. Everything so far has been kind of uh, repetitive. Uh, so then let me show you, I'm about to do the first double breaker. So let's see if that, you know, changes things up. I'm doing circuit number seven, which is the electric cooktop which is a 20, 
20 double. I mean, the double is pretty much the same, but you just kind of lock it in and... <laughs> oh, come on. <clears throat> I swear, come on. And for the life of me, the double pull breaker would not go in. <sighs> I mean, as much as I would grunt, it just wouldn't work. <clears throat> Huh, sorry, sorry, you waste a uh, good valuable 20 minutes. <laughs> this is annoying. I don't want to beat it up with a hammer, that'd be stupid. But I'm tempted now. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna go back out. All I wanted to show you is that a double just have, you know, two wires access and you'll put the black and the white and that's it. So you won't, the white won't be going on the neutral valve because it's 240 volt breaker. So it will feed 120 volt in each wire, the white and the black. Should then let's go. Uh, like to play games, huh? Oh, come on. Let's see if I can get it back in. Oh yeah, no, it's good. So that's it. That's how you do. Uh, you know, a double breaker. I'll take care of all the grounds when I get that additional ground bell. And so I was just finishing up circuit 7, 8, and 9 with all double pole breakers and you will see the orange line is actually the only 25 amp and 10 to wire for my water eater. And then here to keep everything in place once you're done, you have those little things that they give you. Yeah, they're saying if you haven't used all the spots, you can put this in. Gets snapped into place. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay, so here it is. Okay. So as promised, I got another ground bow and was able to finally connect all the ground wire on the right side to that ground bow. I mean, if I pretended to be an electrician, why not pretend to be a plumber as well while I'm at it? So in the next video, we will talk about installing the plumbing system in the cabin. Yes, this is the kitchen slash bathroom wall and I have run all the sewer lines as well as the water line. So definitely click on that link and check out how I managed to figure that out. And spoiler alert, it wasn't easy.